history in bike design. Here you have some pictures from yesterday. Huh? I was very curious about the last one. <laughs> kind of interesting uh, diversification effect. Uh, you are familiar with the power of our visual system. Why? Because our ancestors, this is not the location by the way, our ancestors, um, if they didn't have very powerful visual systems that were eaten by little cats like this one, and they could not pass genes to future generations. So this is why now our visual system is very powerful. I think all of you are familiar with uh, basic visualizations. Uh, um, I don't know, line charts, bubbles, bar charts, histograms, etc. etc. They are very useful for uh, preliminary investigations. And what you can do with our software is to go uh, one step further. For example, you can show up to seven variables into one single plot. And you can use what we call similarity maps. And the idea is that you want to map similar items to similar positions in two or three dimensional space. So what you can do with our 70 plot is something which is simple if you want so you can associate of course three variables with the x y and z dimension then you can use uh, the color you can use the dimension you can use the form you can use the blinking you can project uh, your objects onto the, the floor this is important if you want to help your visual system to reconstruct the 3d world no? if you have 3d glasses of course you can also use for the division. So again, what's important is that uh, you need some training because again, seven variables are many. So of course there is a training to be done because now you see a red, green, it doesn't mean anything to you. It has to be tuned to your application, but after you are trained that red means something, for example here, uh, means rice. That size means um, <coughs> consumption. <laughs> For example, here you can immediately identify that the more you pay, the more you consume. Now it's just kind of contradictory aid of optimization, but we are all familiar with cars. The more you pay, the more the, the fuel consumption. Okay. Let me come to the second topic, that is the similarity map. Uh, of course, we didn't invent the idea. The idea is very old. And the idea is that you start from items which can be very high dimensional. Now think, for example, about uh, text mining. You can have literally 100,000 dimensions, so seven is not enough, of course. What can help mm -hmm. in some cases is to take each item and map this item onto a two or three dimensional space, in particular two dimensional space, because of course credit screens are two dimensional. Why is this useful? <coughs> because our brain is also two or maximum three dimensions. So closeness in space typically is related in our brain to closeness in concepts. This is why it is useful to map similar things together in space. Think about you putting order on your desk. Now you try, hopefully, to put similar things together, etc., etc. It's very natural, very human. <coughs> okay, so again, you start from um, data items. Think about 100,000 dimensions that you want to project each row onto two or three dimensions so that <coughs> similarity between items is translated into closeness in this case two dimensional space. After you do that, you can start reasoning, you can start clustering. Again, clustering, I don't know if everybody is familiar, but it's a very human activity. Each time you give names, you are clustering. Now if you say, okay, this is a man, this is a woman, you are of course clustering together similar cases, no? With exceptions, of course, but this is helpful because uh, you reduce the amount of data that you have to consider. Data reduction is the basis of science, of technology, of everything in our world. 
So again, the idea, if you want the phrase in English, is birds of a feather flock together. Now put similar things together. Then if the individual items are too many, identify prototypes and then think about prototypes. This is what you get by <coughs> mapping cars. So again, here, unfortunately, the, the screen is not terribly clear, but you get groups of cars, and then now you can start clustering. For example, you can collect cars which are similar. By the way, of course, uh, the basic question is how do you measure similarity? This depends on your task. Now, there is not a single way to measure similarity. You can start, if you don't know better, by the usual Euclidean metric. That is the metric everybody is familiar with. But then you want to tune the similarity map to the application that you have. Now think about cars. For example, you have one uh, <coughs> coordinate can be the color of the car. So question, is the color important in order to measure similarity? There is not a single answer, because if you are an artist no, for designing fashion cars, yes, it does. If you are an engineer, of course you don't care. No? So the metric depends on the problem. Then, after you fix the metric, you can start this process. Okay, let me come to the case study. Here I am not an expert in night driving process, so this is uh, help we got by our colleagues in Ensinsoft. Um, who look like nice for the bubbles? No? Again, it takes some training, of course. You have to relate different um, features, no? like colors, dimensions, sizes, etc., etc. After you do it, this is done once and for all, of course, you can start the reasoning. No? By the way, you can use blinking to identify some interesting cases. And then you can start using your brain to reason about the problem, to identify, of course, outliers, to identify clusters of uh, related to um, <coughs> a given uh, idea, a given kind of steel. You can identify some values which are blinking. This is a three-dimensional map. And it's needed to identify groups of uh, experimental cases now which are mapped together. Of course, the interpretation is up to the user. You have to go to the, to the expert. Otherwise, it's just a set of uh, groups of color balls. But again, if you do it, for example, now you can identify prototypes. Now you can start reasoning about the experimental process. OK, so this is, for example, what happens. You can group similar cases together. And here you can visualize them by having this kind of nets. After you identify the prototype, for example, here you can go, you can click on one prototype, you can associate, in this case, a parallel coordinate, and you see, of course, all what you want to know about the particular experiment. So the features related to that particular prototype. Again, if you want to, to get all details, just go to our website, so 